Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna start working on this hybrid bracelet. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this since a couple months back when I posted these rings. They're very easy to make these rings. They're just peyote with some loom on top, but I think a lot of you really liked it. And there I showed you this bracelet along with another one. So a lot of you have been waiting for this. So I decided it's time to make it. And so it's basically a peyote bracelet. We make the uh, toggle clasp as well so you don't need any clasp in this bracelet and then on top we did some loom so from the materials basically you just need some uh, 11 out delicates then you'll need two different colors of 15 o's now here i used gold and silver today i'll be using some really light gold with pink i think you know i've been researching i think these three colors will look nice together and then you'll need a Nymo size D or any other beading thread you like. Then you'll need scissors to cut the thread and beading needle size 10. You can use 11 as well, but you'll be fine with 10. There aren't many tight spaces apart from when we do the toggle. So just thread your needle with comfortable length. You'll be adding quite a few times. Um, in paired, it's quite easy to add a thread. If you don't know how to, I will leave a link in the description box to where I show you how to do it. So just uh, get your materials ready and we'll get to work. So I thread my needle with two yards. I have my delicas ready. That's all we need for now because we'll just do the base only with one color. You don't really need to mix colors here because most of it will be underneath so you won't be able to see it. But I just thought, you know, you're still gonna see the sides and I thought uh, turquoise will look really nice and you will see what I'm doing with turquoise uh, Another thing I wanted to mention this uh, 15 o Tohos. I think they're Tohos They still might be Miyuki uh, 15 o's because I bought a whole box of tons of beads and uh, some of them didn't come with uh, Tags, so I'm not sure what these are. I won't be able to leave you codes. I'll just leave you uh, The number of grams I used in the description box, but as to the codes, I have no idea so I'm just guessing they are Toho's. Just so you know, I'll, I won't be leaving quotes for this. I will leave you all the quotes for this one. And you will see the quotes for the uh, turquoise delicacy. So that's aside. Now we can go ahead and get to work. This bracelet is 16 beads wide. So it means we'll be working with even count peyote. So that's pretty easy. Uh, we will start on this side. I will show you how to do a couple of rows and then you will finish it off on your own and then I'm going to show you how to make the toggle clasp. So I'm just going to take a, well I usually don't use stop beads but just so you know I forgot to mention you might want to use one stop bead here. I'm going to take the stop bead, take my needle through. I won't be leaving a long tail because you don't need a tail on this side much. I will leave uh, about six inches. That should be plenty. And then I'm gonna take my needle through that stop bead again. So now we'll leave it here. I have six inch tail. You, you can actually leave much less because all we need here is just to sew it back in. So that's all I'm leaving. And then I'm gonna pick up 16 delicates. So I have 4, 8, 12, 16. And now I'm going to go ahead, drop it down to my stop bead. Zoom in a bit. I'm going to pick up one delica. I'm going to skip the first delica here. Remember, my needle is going downwards here, so this is here. Stop bead is at the top. I'm going to take one 11 delica, skip one delica at the bottom, and pick up the next one. Pick up one delica. See where my thread's coming out of? I'm going to skip one after that one and pick up the one after. Pick up one delica. See where my thread's coming out of? I'm gonna skip one and pick up the next one. I'm gonna pick up delica, skip one, pick up the one after. Pick up one delica, skip one, 
and pick up the one after. Pick up one delica. See where my thread's coming out of. I'm gonna skip one and pick up the one after. In the beginning, it might be a bit wonky to do this, but you just follow what I'm doing, you'll be just fine. Pick up one delica. Don't worry about pulling your thread hard right now. Well, we'll do it once we finish this row. Skip one, pick up the one after. Pick up one delica, skip one, and then pick up this last one. Make sure you don't go through the stop bead because that's not part of our project. That's just there to hold the beads in place. And now here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold both ends and just pull my thread and make sure it all sits nicely. And this is what you get. So we have three rows of even count period going on already. And then I'm gonna pick up my needle. And from here on, it's very easy. You pick up one delica. All we do now is go through the sticky points. You go through the first sticky point here, pull the thread and make sure you pull it nice and tight at this point. Pick up one delica, go through the next sticky point Pick up one delica, go through the next sticky point, one delica, go through the next sticky point, one delica, go through the next sticky point, one delica, go through the next sticky point. One delica, go through the next sticky point, one delica, and then go through the last sticky point. And now here, just pull your thread nice and tight. You have four rows going on. So I'm gonna show you how to do one more row and you just continue on your own. It's basically the same way all the way until the very end. All you do is just pick up one bead, go through the sticky point, pull your thread, one bead, go through the next sticky point, pull your thread, one bead, go through the next sticky point, pull your thread, one bead, go through the next sticky point. 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 One bead, and then go through the last sticky point. At this point, you wanna go ahead and pull your thread nice and tight, flip it over, and again, one bead, go through the next, one bead, go through the next, all the way, then turn it over, and you just continue like that until you get your full required length. This clasp that we add doesn't really leave any space, doesn't really add any length, so you wanna make sure, see, this is the end and this is the end. It literally leaves like a half a centimeter. So when you are creating this strip of peyote, make sure it goes all around your wrist because your clasp is not gonna add any length. So I'm gonna meet you back here once you have your full length and then we're gonna continue from there. So I have my full length ready and I wanted to explain a bit here how you want to size it. Now, this goes quite snug around my wrist, it's just slightly overlaps but it doesn't really matter for me because eventually I'm gonna sell it and you know I don't know who's gonna buy it with what kind of size of wrist so it doesn't really matter for me but what you want to do if you want to have it just one-sided bracelet like this you can make it snug you can make it loose you can make it as long as you want but you can have this bracelet as double-sided you, you can have it just like a, a normal simple period stitch bracelet on this side if it's too colorful for your outfit on this side so when you wear it this way 
the circumference of the bracelet becomes smaller than on this side because you have all these beads underneath. So you want to make sure when you size your bracelet to give uh, to leave to add a more peyote rose to uh, to be able to wear it like this. And another thing you can do once we finish the whole bracelet, you can add this loom on the second side as well using a different pattern. You can use any loom pattern here because this top is basically loom. I just made up this, you know, simple pattern. So, you know, if you like loom, if you like this bracelet, if you want to have it double-sided, you can just wear it as a peyote or add a second loom using a different pattern here. So that's entirely up to you, depending on how you want to wear it, you just, you know, want to add a bit more if you want to have it as a double-sided. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna make the loop on this side first. So I finished uh, the whole length. Um, I ended up here, so I'm just gonna zoom in a bit. I'm gonna pick up one eleveno, one delica, go through the first sticking out bead, pick up second delica, go through the second sticking out bead. Now here, I turn it over, pick up one delica, go through this sticking out bead, one delica, go through this sticking out bead. So we're basically making that small stretch on the side and we have to make five rows. This is two, This is three rows. Just want to make sure you pull your thread nice and tight all along. This is four in the last row here. And this is five. So we have five rows and now we have to add the same on this side. So we basically have to make our way to this side and where you want to come out, see the sticking out bits, you want to come out of the third one. So you can continue adding this way, go back and forth. So basically we add five rows here as well. And to do that, I'm not going to add a new thread. I'm just going to continue with what I have. I'm just going to go down this bit here, go up this bit here, Basically, through the beads, I just make my way to this third sticking out bead. It's very easy. Just go through the beads without adding anything. Just make sure you go through the neighboring beads so you don't end up with threads on top of beads. Doesn't matter through which beads you go, as long as you come to the same destination. And here I am at the third bead. And I just continue peyote. Pick up one delica, go through this sticking out bead. One delica, go through the last sticking out bead. So this is one row. This is two. Flip it over. This is the third one. Now this is fourth. And the last one. And you are done adding the sides. Now we have to create this bridge on top. And it might look confusing, but it's very easy thing to do. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start normal peyote here. We just continue this peyote, pick up one delica, go through the next sticking out bead, one delica, go through the next sticking out bead, 
and now we just come across emptiness don't get worried it's pretty easy here so what we're gonna do we added four here we added four here so we have eight beads left in between so we're gonna pick up eight delicas One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. so i have eight delicas plus we're gonna add the one that goes on top here so that's nine delicas. So you pick up nine delicas and go through this sticking out bead on the other side. Pick up one delica and then go through the last sticking out bead. That's how it looks like. Then flip it over, pick up one delica, go through the sticking out bead. Now from here, you just follow what I do. Pick up one delica, so this is the sticking out bead. Just make sure you go through one bead. And from here we continue like, you know, when we start peyote. So you pick up one delica, see where you're coming out of, you skip one bead and pick up the one after. Pick up one delica, you skip one bead, you pick up the one after. Pick up one delica, Skip one and pick up the one after. So pick up Delica. So see where your thread's coming out of. You skip the one after and you pick up the next one. And we are across the bridge. Pick up Delica. Go through the next sticking out bead. Pick up Delica. Go through the next sticking out bead. And you're basically done. But you want to make sure to add a couple more rows on top of this. For example, here, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six rows of uh, peyote stitch on top. So, you know, you don't want this part to be, you know, quite loose. So if you just leave it like that, you know, it's, it's quite bendy. So you want to make sure it's quite sturdy on this side as well. If you see, you already have three rows. So you can go ahead, add three more rows on top of this. Then you want to go ahead, get rid of this tail. You can add as many as you want. You can add seven, eight, it's entirely up to you. But I suggest to add at least six. So you already have three, add three more at least. And on this side, get rid of this top bit and get rid of this tail as well. So in the end, you don't have any tail sticking out and you finish off this side. And then I'm gonna meet you back here. So I went ahead, finished off the loop, got rid of the tail, got rid of the tail on this side, and you almost have your bracelet ready. Now we just have to do that toggle and we have to do it separately and then connect it. So it's 12 beads wide. So I took two yard, uh, two feet of uh, thread. Then I'm gonna take my uh, stop bead. I'm gonna leave a tail of about five inch, five, six inch tail, and then take my needle through the stop bead. Yeah, I'm gonna leave six inch tail here. And then I'm gonna pick up 12 delicas. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's four, eight, twelve. So we just start a payout again. I'm gonna drop it down to my stop bead. Pick up one delica. I'm gonna skip the one and then pick up the second one. Pick up Delica, see where my thread's coming out of? I'm gonna skip one, pick up the next one. And then I'm gonna pick up one Delica, see where my thread's coming out of? I'm gonna skip the one after and pick up the next one. Pick up one Delica, see where my thread's coming out of? Skip one, pick up the next one. Pick up one delica, skip one, pick up the next one. Pick up one delica, skip one, and pick up that last delica. And then here I'm just gonna pull both sides of threads. It looks a bit awkward, but you can just help it out with your fingers to make it look like beginning of the peyote. So that's where I have my three rows ready. And then I'm gonna pick up my thread, pick up one delica, 
See all my threads coming out of? All you do is just go through the sticking out beads now. Pick up Delica, go through the next sticking out bead. Pick up Delica, go through the next sticking out bead. Pick up Delica, go through the next sticking out bead. Delica, go through the next sticking out bead. Delica, and then go through the last sticking out bead. So you have four rows ready. You want to have 10 in total. So go ahead, add six more rows of peyote, and then I'm going to meet you back here. So I have my 10 rows of peyote ready. It's quite easy to count. See this two rows of beads at the bottom? All you do is just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's what you have. And you want to make sure your threads are on both sides. If you have 10 rows, it means your both threads are on the opposite directions. So what we're gonna do is create that tiny loop that connects to the bracelet. And that's four beads, uh, four, four beads wide. So it means we have to go somewhere to the middle, which means I want to come out. See this second sticking out point? That's where I want to come out. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to go down this bead. Go up this bead. Go up this bead. And through the bead where I'm supposed to be coming out of. And now I just do peyote. Pick up one delica, go through the next sticking out bead. Pick up one delica, go through the next sticking out bead. Flip it over. That's one row, we need four. Sticking out bead. Through sticking out bead. Flip it over, that's two rows ready. One delica, through the sticking out bead. One delica through the sticking out bead. Flip it over. One delica go through the sticking out bead. One delica go through the sticking out bead. And I have four rows ready. And all we did is just connect to this side. So you want to make sure you center it properly. So this one is 16 beads wide. This one is four beads wide. So 16 minus 4, 12. So on each side, you have to leave six beads. So I want to make sure I do that. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So it means it will go here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. So my thread is here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, I don't want to lose the place where I am. So I'm just going to go see the fourth sticking out bead there. I'm going to go through that there and then I can hold it all in place together like this and then go through the sticking out beads I went on that side I'm gonna go through this side it's not a very comfortable position for me but here then I'm gonna go through the sticking out bead on this side And then through the sticking out bead on this side, the last one. And now here I'm just going to pull my thread and it should zip up. Oops. Okay. See? And I just have to reinforce it. So I'm coming out here. I'm going to go down through this sticking out bead on the other side. And then I'm going to come around. I want to make sure that place is reinforced properly. So I'm just going to take my needle back through this bit here. I'm going to go up this bit here. I'm going to go up this one. I'm going to go up this one. It doesn't matter where you go as long as you just reinforce that spot. because it's the toggle clasp, so every time you put your bracelet on and off, this part will be pulled. So you want to make sure you give it nice 
support. And I think that will be enough. All I have to do now is just get rid of this tail. So I'm gonna go down this bead. I'm gonna go get I'm gonna get away from this spot for a bit first. Just go down some beads. And then here I'm gonna make passes back and forth. So it's quite hard to see, I suppose. My thread's coming out. This bit here, I'm gonna go down the neighbor bit. And then I'm gonna go up the same bit. Pull my thread nice and tight. Then I'm gonna go up this bit here. Get away from that pass. And then here I can just get rid of the tail. Now I'm gonna remove the stop bit on this side, thread my needle, and all I have to do is zip up this toggle. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna see where my thread's coming out of. I'm gonna go through this bit here. Then I'm gonna go through this bit here. Then I'm gonna go through the sticking out bit on this side. So you're basically going back and forth. Then I'm gonna go through the sticking out bit on this side. And now when you come to this point, you attach to this, but you just see well, this is sticking out bit, this is sticking out bit. So this is the sticking out bit as well. Then go through the sticking out bit on this side. It's like tying a corset really. Then sticking out, see this one was sticking out a bit, so this is the sticking out bit as well. Then sticking out a bit on this side. Then sticking out a bit on this side, which is this on here. Then sticking out a bit on this side. The one, the last one on this side, and the last one on this side. And now at this point, you just wanna bend it and pull your thread nice and tight. And we have the toggle. And all I have to do is just get rid of this tail. Now the toggle is quite sturdy and quite tight, so it's gonna be hard to get rid of the tail, but you really just have to do a couple passes. So this last two beads are not connected. See, there is no pass. So you just wanna make sure you go down this neighbor bead. And all I really do here is just go up and down through this last bead because it's gonna be quite hard to go down. So all I do, I'm gonna go down this bead here then I'm gonna go back this bead, pull my thread nice and tight, go down again this bead. Here I'm gonna go up the neighbor one, go down again this one. And then here I want to go down one bead here. Pull my thread nice and tight and I can just get rid of the tail. And you have your bracelet ready. You can wear it as it is actually, you know, it's quite nice. If you want to make patterns on it, you know, you can just follow any pair patterns for 16 beads white. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead, get uh, ready my uh, 50 nose, thread your needle with four yards, and I'm gonna meet you back here. So I was doing a bit of a research and it turns out this uh, 50 nose I'm using are Miyuki. Here, 50 nose I used are Toho. Now, even though they are really tiny beads, 50 nose, there is still a slight size difference because Miyuki's are slightly thinner. So what we're gonna do here, 
I'm still gonna use Miyuki because I don't have many uh, 15 or Toho's and I don't wanna use the same colors. So here for Toho's, I used 16 bead in each row. So a color, which is gold, uh, on each row I have 10 and then I have six B colors. But what we're gonna do here, instead of 16 beads, because they're Miyuki and they're thinner, I'm gonna use 17 beads in the width. So what I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have 10 A colors and I'm gonna have seven B colors. In the end, the result's gonna be exactly the same. Just this uh, zigzag form is gonna be slightly thicker, like by minuscule size, so you're not gonna see the difference. So it's just the difference is Miyuki's are thinner. So if I use 16, I will end up threads showing in the ends, which I don't want. So just keep that in mind. If you're using Toho, use 16 uh, beads in a row. If you're using Miyuki, use 17. So if you're using Miyuki, just follow what I'm doing. If you're using Toho, uh, every time I, you know, here I'll be picking up uh, seven Miyuki's, here you'll be picking up six Toho's. So that's the only difference it's going to be. So we're gonna go ahead and start. So I, I thread my needle with four yards. What we're gonna do here, we want to find the center. So from this end to the point where I have this part here, before the loop starts, I'm gonna bring them together like that. See, and then like this. And then this is approximately the center. So in the end, I have, let's say this two beads, right? So I'm gonna go up this bead And then I'm gonna lay it down. And then I'm gonna take two ends of the thread. And then I want to make sure I pull it and they have even lengths on each side. So we can have two yard to continue this way, two yard to continue this way. And then I'm gonna pick up the side where I have my uh, needle. I'm gonna take my stop bead, pull it all the way down to the payout, and take my needle through again. It will just help to keep the thread in place before we get comfortable length going on. So you still will have two yards left on this side. And then I'm gonna go ahead, take my needle through this side and thread this side. So, I'm just gonna flip it over. I like going to the right when I do this. And then I can zoom in a bit. So here I, I am coming out of that edge bead. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick up one A color. I'm gonna be using pink. Seven B colors. I'm gonna be using gold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven gold beads. And then I'm gonna pick up nine a color because in each row we have to have 10 a colors i already have one here and then i'm gonna pick up nine now one two three four five six seven eight nine so i have to count five nine seven one and then what i'm gonna do here i'm just gonna put it down I need to explain, see where my thread's coming out of. You need to go to the opposite bead on the other side, but in even count period, you don't really have an opposite. So here I am, see, in between two beads on the other side. So I'm just gonna go to the one on the right. Doesn't really matter which one you go. It has to be, you know, approximately opposite. From here, it's quite easier. I'm gonna go down the next bead. So if you've been doing loom, this should be pretty easy for you. Now here we picked up nine A color. I'm gonna pick up eight this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have four, four, so I have eight A color. I'm gonna pick up seven B color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I have seven B color. And then now here you have one A color. We pick up two. One, 
too. So every time in total you have to have 17 beads. It's just on this side, you're gonna decrease the number of a color, on this side you're gonna increase the number. And on the opposite side, see where my thread's coming out here? I'm just gonna go the next bead down. That's it. And then I'm gonna go up the next bead. And now here I have two A color. I'm gonna pick up three. One, two, three. And then seven B color. B color never changes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then here we had eight B color. Now we're gonna pick up seven. And then I'm gonna go next bead on the other side. And then I'm gonna go down the next bead. And then I'm gonna pick up, oh, here we had seven, now I'm gonna pick up a six A color. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we pick up seven B color. And then here we have a 3A color, we're gonna pick up four. One, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna go down this bead here, the next one. So if you see, it's pretty easy. So if you see that row is going up, it will go all the way up, and we're gonna reach until we have one A color, and then we're gonna go down. So I'm just gonna, you know, continue with it for a while. So I make sure you understand what's going on. Then we go up the next bead. Now I have four A colors here. I'm gonna pick up five. One, two, three, four, five. Then I pick up seven B color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then here we had six. I pick up five A color. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm gonna go through the opposite bead on this side. Then I'm gonna go down the next bead. Now here I had five A color, I'm gonna pick up four. One, two, three, four. Then I pick up seven B color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then I pick up, here we had five, I pick up six now. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here we had Five, I picked up four, seven B color. Here we had five, I pick up six. And then go down the opposite bit here. And then you go up the next one. Here we picked up six, now I pick up seven A color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you pick up seven B color. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then you pick up, here we had four, we pick up three. One, two, three. So in total you always have 17 beads. And then you go the opposite one on this side. Then you go down the next one. And then you pick up, here we have three, we pick up two. Two A colors. And then you pick up seven B colors. One, two, three, four. And then here we had seven, we pick up eight now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm gonna go down the opposite bit here. Then go up the next one. Then I have eight here, now I pick up nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's eight, nine, and then I pick up seven B colors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here we have two, I pick up one. And then go the opposite bit on this side. Then go down the next one. Now, here, from having one A color on this side, 
we reached one A color on this side. Now we have to go downwards. So here I have one A color, I pick up two. Seven B colors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here we have nine, I pick up eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here, we're going downwards. And now you go up the next bead. Now you had eight here. Since you're going downwards, you have to have seven now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you pick up seven B color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you pick up, see you have two A color here, you pick up three now. One, two, three. And then go through the opposite bead on the other side. Then go down. See, it's kind of forming. Now you have three here, you pick up four A colors. One, two, three, four. Then you pick up seven B. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you had seven A color here, you pick up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you go down the opposite bead. And you go up the next one then see it's quite easy how it's going on you always have one nine two eight three seven six four now we have to have five five on each side so we have to have five a colors seven b one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. and then five a colors one two three four five And then I'm gonna go the opposite bead on the other side. And then I'm gonna go down the next one. Now it's six and four. So you pick up six A colors, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven B colors, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you pick up four A colors, one, two, three, four. Then you go down the opposite bead. Then you go up the next one. Then you have, you had six and four, you have seven and three now. So that's three A colors, seven B colors, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then seven A color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then go through the opposite one. Then you come down the next one. Then you have eight and three. So you pick up eight A colors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then you pick up seven B colors. One, two, three, four, five five, six, seven. Then you pick up two A colors, one, two. And then go down the opposite bead. Then you go up. Now it's eight and two. Now it's one and nine. One, seven B, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine A. And then go through the opposite bead on the other side. So we made the whole round. From here, it's just like you started in the beginning. Now you have one and nine. Here you had one and nine. So what we did there, we went up eight and two, seven and three. So basically, I made the whole round. If you still don't understand, you just go to the beginning. In the beginning, we added one and nine. It's already here. So you just continue from the second row. And that's how you just go on and on. Look. It's pretty easy, see? So where you need to stop, you see here we reached a corner. So every time you reach a corner, just measure how much you have left. If you have four centimeters left or more, you can go ahead and add one more corner. If you're going downwards, you can go up, or if you're up, you can go down. 
But if you have less than four centimeters, it means you need to stop, come back here, and then I'm gonna show you how to do this tapering down because this is quite mandatory. Because see, if we just stop like this, you have this opening here, it's quite easy to catch on things, but if you taper it down, you know, it kind of makes it closure. So again, if you have more than four centimeters left from wherever you stopped to this part, you can go ahead and add one more going up or down. But if you have less than four centimeters, you have to stop, meet me back here, and we're gonna do tapering down. So once you have that done, I think I'm just gonna go up once, uh, no, I'm gonna go up and down one more time, and then I'm gonna meet you back here to do tapering down. So here, just wanted to explain again. See, I went one more row up. So now I want to measure from where I stopped to where my uh, uh, loop starts. See, I have exactly four centimeters. It means I can go one more down. If I had less than four centimeters, I would have stopped here and I would have showed you how to taper down. Because if I had less than four centimeters and I decided to go one more down, I wouldn't have space left to taper down. So I have exactly four centimeters left, which is inch and a half. So if you have inch and a half left, it means you can still go one more. If it's less, then you have to stop. So I'm gonna go one more down and then I'm gonna show you how to do the tapering. So I think I'm done here. If you look at it, it's less than four centimeters and less than inch and a half. So I don't have space left to add one more of those. So instead, we're just gonna taper down and finish it off like this. So it's nice and clean finish. So to taper down, first we have to taper down the number of uh, color B because you can see we turned it into a sharp uh, corner there. So in the last row, we picked up 9A, 7B and 1A. So instead, I'm gonna pick up 10A, 6B, 1A. 6B, and 1A. Then I'm gonna take it through the opposite B. Then I'm gonna go up the next B. Now I'm gonna pick up 1A, 5B, and 11A. 1A, 5B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 11A. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then go through the opposite bead on the other side. So basically we are decreasing the number of B here. So now I'm gonna have 12A, 4B and 1A. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Then 4B, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1A. And then go through the opposite bead on this side. And now I'm gonna pick up 1A, 3B, and then 13A. 1A, 3B, 1, 2, 3. Then I'm gonna pick up 13A. 13. So we're still keeping the number 17 beads here. Then Oops, I forgot to go up this bit here, so I'll just take this down, pull out all the beads, thread my needle again, I'll go up this bit here, and then pick up all the beads again. 1A, 3B, and 13A. And then go through the opposite side. Then you want to go down the next bead. Then pick up 14A, 2B, and 1A. 2B, and then 1A. And then go through the opposite bead. Then go up. And then the last one we pick up 1A, 1B, and 15A. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then go through the opposite bead. 
and now here we're gonna taper down the number of beads so I'm just gonna do it quite close up now here this is the opposite bead right I'm gonna go down but I don't want to stop here I want to come down this next bead in the same row so I'm just gonna go down this bead here oops and then go down this bead see this is the bead we're supposed to be coming down I want to go to the second bead in the same row and then I'm gonna pick up 14 A colors and then go down the opposite bead on this side See, we are slowly decreasing the number of beads. Then I'm gonna go up the next bead and now pick up 12 A's. And then see, this is the bead we're supposed see, this is the bead we went to. So we would be going to the bead next to it, but we're gonna go the bead under that. So in this row, we went one bead down. In the second row, we're gonna go the third bead. And then go up. And then you would go down the opposite bead. And then we want to go down one more bead in the same row. So I'm just gonna go down the neighbor bead. And through the bead we're supposed to be coming out of. And now I'm going to pick up nine A's. And then go through the opposite bead. And then go up. And pick up seven beads. Again, you just see the bead you're coming out of here. So this is the bead next to it. And this is the bead underneath that in the same row. So this is the bead you're coming out of here. This is the bead you're supposed to go. And the bead, next bead in the same row. And pull your thread through. Now, see, this is the neighbor bead. We're gonna go down that bead. Pull your thread. Now, we need to go to the bead in the same row but under see this is the bead we're coming out of we need to go to this bead so I'm just gonna go down this neighbor bead first and then go straight through the bead I need to go to and this time pick up five 15 o's one two three four five and go through the bottom bead there and basically you are done that's tapering down you need to do. So we are done with the half. You go ahead, get rid of this tail. Then you turn it over, remove that stop bit, take your needle and copy exactly what you did on the other side. So remember we started with uh, one uh, A color, seven B color, nine A color. So now you just taper down this way. So you have next you pick up two, uh, a color, 7B color and 9A color and you just go on all the way until the end you just copy exactly what you did on the other side because you have exactly half left on the other so once you ha have done that I'm gonna meet you back here and then we're gonna compare our bracelets so here are my gorgeous bracelets and the rings I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial I hope it wasn't too confusing because it's not a very easy uh, bracelet to explain especially when it comes to the uh, end parts of the uh, loom so you know if you didn't understand just rewind and rewatch, and you should be fine but in the end you just end up with this gorgeous bracelets it's very I, I really like the color combo here as well so it's quite late now it's not very sunny to show all the colors but I think you can see well so thanks for watching guys stay tuned for more I will leave link uh, to these rings in the description box if you haven't seen that yet I will leave numbers of grams of beads I used. I won't be able to leave codes for the 15 O's I used here, but all the rest I will uh, put in the description box. So 
And a lot of you ask me where I buy my beads. I can't really tell you where because I live in England and most of you, you know, are all over the world. So that's why I leave the codes and uh, colors sometimes when it comes to fire polish so you can Google them up and find them in your uh, local area. Because if I tell you where I bought them, it's going to be irrelevant to 99% of my viewers. So I don't want to waste anyone's time with that. So if you look for beads, Google it. That's my best suggestion. There is not one store that will have all the beads you need. I never buy from one store. I have tons of stores I go to, tons of stores I shop online, and you know, I just subscribe and whenever they have sales on, I just go and buy tons of stuff. So that's my suggestion. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.